The Challenge of the Yukon. Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of a small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston plodded wearily beside his sled. His team was exhausted and strained to keep up with King, the huge husky lead dog, who seemed the only one with enough strength and reserve to carry on. They pulled up in front of Jacques LeBlanc's trading post. The dog team lay down in their traces, too tired to move. King followed his master into the store. Hello. Do you run this post? We. Oui, I am Jacques LeBlanc. This is my post. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. Glad to see you, Sergeant. I have heard about you, but you never come up here before. This is the first time I've had to come up here. It's a little outside my usual territory. I'm trailing a criminal. Sit down, Sergeant. Oh, you look so tired. Let me get you some hot tea. Oh, thanks, Shark. But there isn't time. All I want is some information. Have you seen anything of a half-breed? He's big, looks like an Indian, talks good English, a stranger around here? Mm, that description, it fits so many. <laughs> I could tell you ten, fifteen like that to bring furs to trade. This man's name is Pedro Duche. They call him Indian Pete. Mm, I do not know that name. I've been trailing him for two months. Almost caught him at Circle City. He had to abandon his dog team. He knows I'm following him, and his trail leads here. You have seen him? You know how he looks? No, I've never seen him. My dog here knows his scent, though, so I know I'm on the right trail. He's a murderer and a thief, and I'm out to get him. He is murderer? He killed an Eskimo and his son and stole a fine catch of fox pelts. Silver fox. Silver fox? Uh, like, Like this? Exactly like that. Where'd you get this? There is man here, one hour ago. He's very tired, could hardly walk. He trade me these for supplies. King, come here, boy. Get the scent of this, boy. <laughs> he not like fox smell, eh? Huh? It isn't the fox scent he's growling at. It's the scent of Indian Pete. Can you tell me which way this man went? No, I not see. He's very tired, just like you. He can't go far. Why you not rest and eat? I can't stop for that. We've almost got him at last. King will pick up his trail from here. Come on, boy. <laughs> Thanks, Shark. I'll see you again. Goodbye, Sasha. Good luck. All right, King. Get that scent. Hmm. Off into the woods. All right. Up, you huskies. Come on, boys. Up, I say. Push! Push! The dog team dragged their traces wearily. With very little rest, they had traveled almost a hundred miles on the trail of Indian Pete. As King led them into the forest, the trail grew difficult. Stumps of trees and snow in drifts hindering their passage. Finally, Preston called to King as he broke the trail in front. King, come back here, boy. Come here. Ho! Ho, you huskies! I guess you're going to have to do double duty, boy. Help these dogs pull that sled. I'm sorry, old fellow, but you're the only one with enough strength left. There. On King! Though it was unusual for Preston to put King in harness, it had happened before, and his amazing strength and stamina eased the burden of the dog team and enabled them to go faster. Darkness was almost upon them, when suddenly a shot rang out through the forest. King halted the team and turned anxiously as Preston staggered and fell, hitting his head against the stump of a tree as he went down. King! Here! King! King, the harness holding him back, could not pursue the man who shot his master. He turned the team around and came back to the unconscious dog and tried to arouse him by licking his face and tugging at his sleeve. The dog team sank down in the snow exhausted and was soon asleep. King, in his harness, finally curled up close to the body of his master, his head on the mounty's shoulder. When Preston regained consciousness, darkness had fallen. 
King was touching him with his nose anxiously. What? What are you... Oh, my leg. King, guess you kept me from freezing, boy. Now if I could... drag myself to that sled. Painfully, Preston dragged himself to the sled, crawled under the blankets and furs, and sank into an exhausted slumber. Tila, the young squaw of Big Feather, the Indian trapper, crooned softly to her baby in her small cabin at the edge of the forest. Big Feather would be away for two nights tending to his traps, but Tila was used to being alone in the wilderness. She gazed fondly at her firstborn child, the son that she and Big Feather had wanted so much. Let me in! Who there? Let me in! I'm sick. I, I'm a trapper. What do you want? Uh, I'm sick. Come in. I, I gotta sleep. I come fast and far. You lie down. Tila give you hot soup. Too tired to eat. No soup. I just... Uh. You sleep. You look bad, man. I wish Big Feather here. It was daylight, and Tila had stirred up the fire and fed the baby when Pete awoke. Oh, sleep. How long have I been asleep? You sleep all night. All night? I gotta get out of here. You got some breakfast? Here, on table. You eat, you go. Pour me some tea. Hurry up, be quick about it. Me hurry. Hey, listen. What's that? Me look. Dog team come. Men sit on sled. What? What? Oh, that dirty. Can't be trailing me. I circled and came from the other way. Where's my rifle? You want shoot him? He's after me, ain't he? I was sure I hit him. I saw him fall. Where's my gun? Uh, here it is. This time I'll get him. The dirty red coat. Him police? Now let him come out. Why you break window? I'm going to shoot through it. He won't know what hit him. What now? Where did the bullet go with this gun? Why, you filthy engine, you! No, no, I Yeah, I know you did. I ought to bash you over the head with this. Well, I got more bullets here. Why, you dirty squaw, you took those two? You bad man, Tila, no. Come on, Tommy, or I'll kill you, you Tila, dirty squaw. Tila, throw out in snow, you can't Why, bend. you double-crossing rat skin, I... He's almost here. Yeah. I know what I'll do. No, you not hurt Papoose. See this knife? I'm holding it right under the kid's blanket. You do as I tell you or I'll kill him. Please, I do. No hurt, Papoose. I'm putting this blanket around me and holding the kid. You say I'm your husband, see? You big feather? Tell him I'm in then. I can pass for one. Get him in here. Then go outside till I come and take the dog team. You no hurt, Papoose. You do as I say and your baby won't be hurt. Hello? Anybody here? Open the door. I'll be watching from the window. Bring him in. Say anything you shouldn't. This knife goes through your kid. Me do. No hurt, Papoose. How? Well, will you help me, please? I've been shot. You police? I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. Is there anyone else in the cabin who could help me in? Husband, he's sick. I do. Me strong. Quiet, King. He's not used to being in harness. We'll bring you in later, boy. Be quiet. You think you can get me in? I've been shot through the leg. Oh, Tila's strong. You lean on shoulder. Me get you in. Wait. Hand me that stick to support me. Here. Thanks. Here we go, Tila. <laughs> Hopping sure makes it hurt. That's it, Tila. Now if I can get hold of the door...
King grew almost frantic as he saw Sergeant Preston disappear into the cabin. Where he had left the trail of Indian Pete, King had picked it up again as they pulled up in front of the door. He somehow connected the scent of this man with his master's injury, and a growl rose in his throat as he felt the restraining harness that kept him from the Mountie. At last he turned and began to slash at the strap with his sharp teeth. Inside the cabin, Pete sat hunched over the baby's basket, a blanket wrapped around him, as Teela put Preston on the cot. There, Teela. Thank you. Now maybe I can dress this wound. Mm, feels good to get warm again. Where are you shot? I'm on the trail of an outlaw. He ambushed me and shot me through the leg. You haven't seen anything of a strange man around here, have you? No. No man around here. Woman, take off Parker, gun belt. Him want fixed bullet hole. You can take my Parker, Teela, but I'll keep my revolver. <clears throat> Thanks. Now I wonder if you'll go out to my sled and get my first aid kit. It's a square box. Me do. Me help bring blankets in. That's not necessary. If you're sick. Me not too sick. All right, woman. As the door of the cabin closed, the last strap of the harness parted between King's teeth. Pete rushed to the sled, and King got his scent, the scent of the man Preston had told him to get. As Pete reached for Preston's rifle that lay under the blankets, the great dog rushed him. <laughs> on the door. I can cover him with my revolver. You all right? Yes. Get off him, King. Back, boy. All right, Pete. I've got you covered. Don't reach for your gun. Him not got gun. Me throw away bullets. Good for you, Taylor. All right, Pete. Get up. Bring him in, King, and watch him. Uh, I'll come. I call that dog off. That dog's staying right behind you. Come on. Uh, don't let him at me again. Uh, uh. Papoose. He all right? He's all right, Teela. Sit over in that chair in the corner, Pete. Guard him, King. Don't let him move. Dirty cur. That's I enough, out of you. That dog's going to be your jailer until we get you behind bars. You better be nice to him. Where's your husband, Teela? Big Feather. Him come home tonight, maybe. You sick. Till you lie down. I... I guess you're right. I am a little dizzy. You want me, hold guard? It's not necessary. We don't need a gun with King watching, do we, boy? Watch him, boy. Keep him in that chair. If he moves, get him. Now, now if you'll help me with the cot, Taylor, we'll fix this wound and maybe I can get some rest. King guarded Indian Pete well until Sergeant Preston's wound was healed enough to travel and the outlaw was brought to justice. The Mountie still limped a little when he made his report to headquarters, and King stayed close at his side. I'm not the one who deserves commendation, Lieutenant. It was King here who did all the work. Oh, you both did a fine job, Sergeant. <laughs> and if King were a man, we'd commend him too. He's the finest dog in the service. Hear that, fella? You're the finest dog in the service. <laughs> And from the look of him, that's all the reward he wants. A pat for two and to hear that tone in your voice. I guess you're right, Lieutenant. We kind of like each other, don't we, boy? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.